Hey everybody, peace, peace, peace. It's Sylvia Mordini. So happy to see you guys. We are gonna get started in a beautiful meditation, but first I just want to speak a little bit to the ritual of meditation and perhaps how to be more successful at maintaining a meditation practice. So first thing, let me move out of the way so that you can see my meditation cushion. And a beautiful student gifted this to me many, many years ago. He brought it all the way from Nepal. So this is where I meditate. And so it holds my energy. It's my special space. And I also meditate in bed as well. But outside of bed, this is where I always come to. And it's a place that I see and I say, okay, this purpose for this space is to meditate. And it's a reminder and I always have it and I can just go to it. It's like a little peace place for me. So if you have a corner of your house, you have a little cushion, you have a special blanket, there's some way to create a little sacred space. It really does help to be able to come back to that space over and over and over again, right? And I also am wearing a mala necklace of which I have many, they're a meditation tool and I have great free programs on how to meditate with the mala. Check that out on Teachable. So this one is very long to the first and second chakras, but a mala is something that I wear so it's holding the energy of the meditation. And all day long, if I look at it, if I touch it, I just reignite that feeling that I had in meditation. Same with the, the little talisman that I'm wearing around my wrist. So I have two more malas, uh, wooden beads, snake wood and mama Buddha uh, wood, and then two little white bracelets that are protectors, that they protect me from any negative energy. So I'm wearing these again as reminders, and then all day long, I'm able to come back to them and just touch them or see them and if my mind is getting anxious, I just have to touch them. Remember that feeling I had in meditation and there's an association with it and then I come back. It's a pattern interrupt, so to speak. It's a reset if my mind is spinning in a certain direction and I wanna bring it back to the feeling of peace and calm, tranquility, ease, focus that I have for my meditation practice. So whether it's a little space or it's something that you actually are wearing to hold the energy or the same time of day as well really helps to maintain the ritual and sacred practice of meditation. So how to sit? I want to refer you to some of my other videos about how to sit in meditation, but briefly, let's take a look at Sukhasana, ankles under knees, Great, knees go further forward. Or Siddhasana, or ankle in front of ankle, knees are really wide. There's a lot of hip openness that's required to be in this position. And I am sitting in Ardha Padmasana with my right foot on the ground, closest to me. The reason for the right foot on the ground closest, whether it's in Siddhasana or Sukhasana or Padmasana, is because the right foot closest makes you feel more grounded. That's related to the root chakra, the masculine energy. So that rooting down into the earth. So that's why I have it closest to me to give me that feeling because that's what I want for my meditation practice to get re-rooted and grounded and stable, physically stable, mentally stable, emotionally, just stability in all ways, all the things that we associate with the root chakra. What to do with your hands, check out my videos on mudras and the meaning of the mudras or get my free program downloads on mudras on Teachable. So even fundamentally, palms down. If you need more grounding and stability, palms open. If you need more energy, right? More focus, more upliftment. Instead of having that third cup of coffee in the afternoon, maybe just sit and meditate for, for a few minutes and palms open, call energy to you that way. I like to sit with uh, my right hand inside my left, the left side, the receiving side, the feminine, holding the right, thumbs together at the second chakra. 
And then take a breath, draw your shoulders up by your ears, pull them straight back, exhale. Notice that there's not a force, up, back, down, it's up, back, and then just exhale. And some of that softens and enough of it stays. So we don't want our shoulders pulling down. We want to be upright, but not stiff. <laughs> yeah. Now put a little smile on your face. Think about something that brings you joy, contentment, a happy place, a situation, a person, your own beautiful divine heart, and soulful being, whatever strikes joy in this moment, lights you up. Think of that and wear a little smile on your face. Take a breath in, exhale out your mouth. And again, some of the smile stays just enough, like a little half Buddha smile, so it doesn't feel forced. But with the events of our days, there's so much trauma in the news and recent events, it's hard not to have our faces become sour, negative, angry, sad, and with good reason, with very good reason. When we see terrorist acts and we see people suffering, you can't help but show that expression on your face for certain. So to balance that out, that concert of nation, just trying to lighten up the face so that the face doesn't forget this feeling, yeah? The muscles of your face then associated with feelings as well. So then close your eyes and give your eyes somewhere to look even when they're closed by gazing to the center of your forehead. And then allow yourself here to take a big breath in through your nose, exhale out your mouth, and simply just watch what you're thinking. Watch how you're breathing. And this is known as Anapanasati, the oldest form of meditation. You're just observing, you're witnessing your own thoughts and your own breath. But please resist the urge to engage with your thoughts or try to judge your thoughts or fix them, push them or pull them. Simply just observe them. There's nothing to fix for you are not broken. There's nothing wrong with the way that you're breathing or you're thinking. It's just giving you information about how you're feeling. And what you're feeling can't be wrong, it's part of your humanness. So as you watch your thoughts, notice if there's a particular thought that keeps coming back, like clouds in the sky floating through the the same sort of cloud continues to come back and it goes away and then it comes back again. As you see that thought, what feeling is associated with that thought? Do your best not to edit your feelings. Just be honest with yourself. Is it sadness? Is it joy, peace, happiness, stress, overwhelm, anger, whatever it may be, we will not spiritually bypass judging our thoughts into a good or bad allow yourself to appreciate any of your thoughts that create feelings and allow yourself to experience any of your feelings. In particular here, 
if there's a particular thought that is coming up, we'll burn it over. It's the feeling associated with you, the prevalent feeling that you have right now. Introduce yourself to it. Be aware of it. And then do you feel that feeling in a particular part of your body? What is the somatic expression of that emotion? Is it in your shoulder, to the right, to the left, your low back? Is it in your upper belly, your right hip? Is it for you? If that emotion is coming to live in the tissues of your body. For me, when I feel fear, the front center of my chest gets really hard. And it feels as if there's an elephant sitting on my chest. And my shoulders will round over. And my heart will literally close as the shoulders come round and forward. And I feel fear. My body has a response to that, a somatic expression. And so now I know. And so where are you feeling? prevalent emotion in this moment. Just be aware of it. Think of that feeling there in your body is a little ice cube emotion. It's just this little ice cube there in your shoulder, your hip, your low back, your belly. And I want you to imagine that there's this beautiful white, golden, warm light that's radiating above you. Feel this warmth. Draw the warm energy of this white golden light from source energy beyond the astral sphere, up, 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 from the one, from great spirit, from the source of all good and love and light. And draw it down in through the crown of your head and direct that white, golden, warm light to the ice cube of the emotion and let it melt. The more light you bring down into the ice cube, the easier it melts. how any tension or tightness that emotion was expressing is no longer there. It's not that we are denying or pushing the emotion away, it's just it softens its form. The ice cube now is just water. Do this anytime you need to. When you're feeling a tension in the body. You can sit and just observe yourself, Anapanasati. What are you thinking? What if from those thoughts, what emotion is being triggered? 
and where are you storing that emotion in your body? And then you can just soften and acknowledge that emotion. Bring the warm golden light. transform it or transmute it. So the seeds of hate. Here is love. And those little ice cubes of anger, they melt. transmute to happiness. Acknowledging everything you feel and you think. Allow yourself to know that you are supported by divine source energy and this beautiful white light from that place of the ice cube now radiates out from the inside in all directions. From your right hip, it radiates out and up, side to side, your low belly, your back of your heart, or your shoulders, wherever it was. Let the light radiate from within till you Remember that you are this beautiful, beautiful light being having a human experience. And what joy there is in being human. As you deepen your breath, feel recharged by this meditation. And bring your hands together at your heart. Taking a big, big breath in, open mouth, exhale. And the light of love from my heart to your heart to the heart of the universe. May you love yourself, love your day, and love your life. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful day.